Hey folks, um, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to explain the difference between uh, diametric and trimetric in relation to axonometric projection. Now in class you'll often have covered this and the one you would have done is uh, isometric where the three angles between your axes would all add up to 120 degrees each where you have a vertical line you project down at 30 degrees and 30 degrees. Likewise over here 30 and 30. Now, sometimes, okay, they may pose this problem to you, obviously, it would be at senior cycle in fifth and sixth year, where you have diametric and trimetric. Now, diametric, di, meaning two, is where two angles are going to be the same instead of all three of them being the same, which is when it's eyes up. And then trimetric, you might think it's three angles the same, but what it is means, or what it does mean, is that all three angles are different. Okay, so in diametric, I'm just going to do an explanation of how to set up a problem here, but all the same rules will apply afterwards. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do two angles of 110, 110, and that should leave us an angle of 140 left over. So, as you can see, I've done a vertical line for my y-axis and a vertical line over here for my y-axis. What I would do is, I would get my protractor, and on my protractor, reading from the center point, I'd read 110, this way, so 90, 100, 110. We'd mark that there, and I would do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Now, obviously, it just depends on the conditions of the setup of the question. So 110 reading this way as well, reading around in this direction. Now that I've done those two marks, I would very quickly put in my axes. And the exact same on this side as well. It doesn't matter how long they are, the axis can go on, it doesn't matter. Now, in this case, I'm going to say that this is my vertical plane, so this is my x axis, and this is my end vertical plane, this will be my z axis. Okay? So, what we did there is we have an angle inside here between the y and the x axis of 110. Once again, we also have 110 between the y and the z axis, meaning that this angle down here on the horizontal plane between the x and the z axis will be 140. Okay? For a trimetric, I'm simply going to do any three random angles. Okay? So I'm going to do quite a large one here. Go a little bit larger. It's going off at any angle. I'm going to say, once again, that's my, in this case, I'll say it's my x axis. And this one, I'll go something like. This, which would be my Y. Now, once again, that can go on. The only reason I've left the chart is because my Z one here is getting in the way of it. Okay, so same principle. Three different random angles inside here. Don't know what they are, okay? I'm assuming they're all different because I just did them at random angles, okay? So they're different. And in this one, we have two of the same angles. Now, in relation to the setup, what we want to do is we want to set up our, uh, I suppose, our mock-up horizontal plane, uh, vertical plane and end vertical planes. Likewise, we're going to do the same here. Now, I might just do one here and one here and then the two of the plans, okay? Because the same principles will apply in relation to the setups. So, in regards to setting up the horizontal plane one, okay, what I would do is, in relation to the y-axis, now the y-axis is a perfectly perpendicular, or sorry, vertical line. So, what I want to do is, I want to create, okay, the first part of my axonometric plane that is going to be perpendicular to that y-axis. Now, because that's vertical, I want to set a line up that is horizontal, because horizontal is perpendicular to vertical. Having set up that horizontal, okay, right there, what I'm going to do is, where that line, part of the axonometry plane that cuts the x-axis, which is right here, I'm going to project downwards, and I'm also going to do the same on the right-hand side. Okay. What I would then do is project the horizontal line across parallel to the uh, this line here. And then what I need to do is, from where the y-axis is, I'm going to bring this down. It's actually right in the middle in this case. Okay, it mightn't always be in the middle. But using my compass then, which I haven't set up, and I'll just get it set up here. Using my compass, I would then set up an arc, or a semicircle, I should say. And you'll see the difference in a second. So, with this point right in here, because I know it's in the center of the line, you usually work out that way in diametric, and do a semicircle like that. Now, where that semicircle <coughs> cuts through, 
the y-axis when it was brought down I'm going to connect this point here down to the end of my diameter there and there and what I've done is I have set up a mock-up of my horizontal plane where this point here is a point view of the y-axis when I look down on top of it this line technically here is my x-axis and this line is my z-axis making this 90 degree angle here in relation to the horizontal plane and that's where our plan view would usually fit inside okay now I want to do the same thing up here and I'm going to put it in for the vertical plane which is between the x and the y-axis now in uh, the normal version here where we usually just do the normal isometric version what you often end up doing is you go at 60 degrees like this now in relation to diametric that is not the case what we have to do is where the z-axis is here we're going to extend that out so I'm going to extend that out there like that likewise we did with the y-axis coming down by extending that out what I want to do is I want to project from this point perpendicular to that line so I usually use my 45 degree sets go here line it up on the z-axis make sure you're accurate here it's very important and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it in this direction move it up and where the point was down here that cut through the previous x-axis from there I'm going to now project a line up like that but what's important to note about that line that I'm just after drawing is it is perpendicular to the z axis very important it is perpendicular to the z axis okay that is really really important now what I want to do is you can see here where it's after cutting the y axis so you can see here now we actually have what's going to be known as an isosceles triangle if I was to connect this one up down to here if I was to project out the x-axis that x-axis is perpendicular to this edge so what I want to do is parallel to the z-axis sure I'm on the money now from where this edge here of the axonometric plane cuts the x and the y-axis I'm going to project out parallel and parallel rotate it okay I have to move set square here just because the visualizer is getting slightly in the way and then I'll move it again I'm just doing a bit of sliding set squares here okay now that line there is parallel to this edge of the axonometric plane what I also have to do in putting here is I have to put in another semicircle that's going to fit from here to here and as you can see by projecting out the z-axis you can see that this point here is not in the middle of this line okay so what we have to do is we have to get the middle of that line normal construction here we're just going to bisect our line so swing a distance greater than halfway on both sides so I have to extend that one a little bit further just to make sure I have the exact point and then connect this to this to get the middle now using the same principle we're going to use this point here out to the edge I'm going to swing a semicircle yep happy with that now where the difference is once again there's another slight difference here if you remember any angle inside of a semicircle when it has touches uh, either end of the, of the diameter and any point on the circumference of the circle or of the semicircle will create a 90 degree angle here now our 90 degree angle is going to be created where the z axis comes along and cuts through the semicircle right here at that point there i'm going to join to one end of the diameter here and then one end up here now let's relate back this is a point view of the z axis over here is the X and up here is the Y okay that is how you set up for a diametric question here we have the horizontal plane in this case here X Y uh, we would have the vertical plane BP okay obviously the same principles would apply if I was to set it up over here for the end vertical plane where I would project out my X and project out uh, sorry project out obviously we've got the perpendicular edge here already to that and then from where it hits the z-axis and the y-axis like we did here I project out perpendicular then set up my semicircle and once again I get a very similar axis like this okay that might be going in maybe this direction okay that's how we do it for diametric now for trimetric 
Same principles will apply, but obviously we have three separate angles. So the first one I would usually always base it off is the Y, because generally the Y is going in a vertical direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a horizontal line. Once again, like we did over here, where it cuts the Y axis in this case and the Z axis right here. I'm going to project it down and down. Now, as you can see, my Y axis in this case, when I bring that down, you can clearly see it is not in the middle of these two lines. Okay, it doesn't work out the way it did over here. So what we're going to do is, once again, same rules. We're going to set up a semicircle. So from there to there, what do I need to do? I need to get the middle of that line. So same principle, bisect. Now, because this line is horizontal, it makes it easier for me to bisect it. So there's the middle dot. From there, I'm just going to use my T square and set square to mark the middle. Now that I've got the middle of that line, I'm going to set up a semicircle. And inside of that semicircle, I'm going to create my perfectly 90 degree angle for my horizontal plane. One end of the diameter there. Doesn't matter how big the semicircle is. The same rules will apply. Now, let's relate again. This is a point view right here of my Y axis. In this case, I've got, sorry, that should have read Z there, apologies. This is my Z axis, and here is my X axis. Okay, that there is the setup for our horizontal plane. Now, in this case, I'm going to say my vertical plane is over here, okay, because this is my X one, okay, just because I'd be running into a bit of a kind of messiness inside here. Now, what we have to do is same rules. Where the z-axis is here, I'm going to extend it on, like that. And then I have to project perpendicular to that z-axis. So I use my set square like this. I usually rotate it. Now I've got a perpendicular line to this z-axis that has been extended on. Where it hits the x-axis is the start point for my axonometric plane. And there we have it. That there is now my axonometric plane. I can connect this last one up here. And that line there should be perpendicular to the x-axis here. So, need to actually do that now and set up my plane. So, parallel to the z-axis. Project out from where the axonometric plane cuts through your axis. I'm going to set up parallel then to this edge of my axonometric plane. From there, you can see that this line is not in the middle. Same principle, need to get the middle. So, bisect the line. I've now got the middle of that line, and same principle, semicircle. There we go, and you can see clearly where the z-axis runs through and cuts the circumference, or the circumference of the semicircle. I connect that point to the edge of the diameter there, and this one here. And there we go, we have our trimetric plane set up, okay? This here is a point view of the z-axis. Up here, I've got the y-axis, and down here, I've got the x-axis. And in this case, it will be my vertical plane once again. Now, the same principle will apply if I was to introduce it over here, where I would extend on my x-axis from the two edges points here of where it cuts the z and the y-axis, project out parallel, then parallel to where the, that part of the axonometric plane cuts through the end vertical plane, I would do that, semicircle, and I would create it as well. So, as you can see there, guys, the same rules apply to both of them, okay? The only difference is the angles that are created between your X, Y, and Z axis. And you can see then the actual triangle that's inside here. In this case, we have an isosceles one because it is diametric, two angles the same. In here, we actually have a scalene triangle because all three angles are actually different inside here. And all it does is it gives us a slightly different orientation of the three-dimensional object in here once you have your 2D views put in, okay? So that video there, guys, is how to do uh, a setup for a diametric and a trimetric uh, in axonometric projection. Hope you found that helpful.